Hello, my name is Dr. Jessica Trailer. I'm an assistant professor of psychology at Gordon State College in Barnesville, Georgia. Gordon State College is a beautiful four-year residential college in rural Georgia. Some of our more popular majors are human services, business management, nursing, and education. Gordon offers the community a variety of engagement opportunities, including theater and musical performances, sporting events, free public lectures, and a variety of amenities that are open to the public, including a wonderful library and cafeteria. At one point, Gordon was the center of community life with activities that appealed to citizens of all ages. Now, to some, there's a perceived division between the college and community. It seems to have improved over the past few years, thanks to our theater department and the new football team, but we started to wonder what happened and how could we help the college continue to rebuild those relationships? As I mentioned, I teach psychology as part of the human services degree. Our vision for this project necessitated a wide range of collaborators and consultants to fill in some gaps. We consulted with our theater professors to consider how to film the interviews and the ultimate outcome of the project, potentially a stage play. We consulted with our history faculty to help us understand the culture during that time and the process and practice of oral history. We consulted with our college archivists to locate records, but also to start the process of storing what we discovered. We consulted with local residents and journalists to help us understand the local community during that time and now, and to document it in the best way possible. We also worked with our coordinator of alumni affairs who helped us contact alumni and shared the alumni database. After a few conversations with our local historians and residents, we decided to focus on times of transition for Gordon and the local community. We wanted to interview alumni from the early 1960s through the mid 1970s. During this time frame, public schools in Barnesville were desegregated. And Gordon, being a four year preparatory school and military college at the time, was also part of the integration process. Then we looked at Gordon alumni during the transition from Gordon being a private military college to becoming part of the public university system. Those were huge transitions, both for Gordon and for the local community. Some of our objectives were to help students develop communication, critical thinking, and collaboration skills. We wanted the students to see their college through the eyes of alumni who were there 50 years ago. We also wanted to strengthen the relationships between the college and community. Through the interviews, we heard a lot of wonderful stories about how Gordon was open to the community. There was a community recreation center on the campus and the football games were the highlight of the week. In addition, we wanted to update some of the alumni contact information, especially for our alumni of color. Knowing that the time frame we were considering was 50 years ago, some of the people we wanted to interview were approaching their 70s. We wanted to preserve their stories. Sadly, one of our interviewees passed away shortly after his interview was recorded, but we were thankful because we were able to collect his story before his passing. In addition, one of our primary goals was to document marginalized perspectives and voices. There were a few students of color at Gordon in the 1960s, and there aren't many documents that record their experiences. We wanted to bring some of those voices forward we also wanted to contribute to Gordon's archives so that other researchers could use this information for further analysis in the future. Gordon has a deep history starting as a one room schoolhouse and then becoming a local high school and a private military school in 1852, then transitioning to become part of the university system 50 years ago in 1972 after enrollment decreased, partially due to the Vietnam War. We have a lot of history that needs to be preserved. The primary methodology for our project was community engaged research. In that line of research, the focus can shift as you build relationships with your community partners and consider their perspectives. And that's what happened during our research. We started with an interest in the town gown relationship during times of transition. And as you'll see, we shifted to a focus on community resilience and what that legacy might mean for us moving forward. We conducted this qualitative research as service learning and followed the oral history framework with a focus on gathering and preserving narratives, specifically in relation to the time our interviewees spent as Gordon students. The biggest portion of our work last spring was locating alumni to interview. We started with the alumni database, which provided us with a large list of people to contact. As we began making those contacts, we noticed that some of the contact information was not up to date. This does happen with databases from time to time. We also noticed that there were not as many people of color in the database as we would like. So finding those voices took a different type of effort. We tried posting on social media to recruit more participants, and that did work to get more interested participants, but not people of color in general. 
Fortunately, Gordon, being a four-year preparatory school and two-year military college, had annuals. We were able to look through those and find people of color who attended Gordon during the late 1960s and early 1970s. We made a list of those alumni and reached out to our local residents and historians to help us contact them. Students were recruited to conduct the interviews. Two classes participated in collaboration to complete the bulk of these interviews. Students from other classes volunteered as they were interested in this project. All students completed an orientation process. They were instructed to use a standard interview guide based on the appreciative inquiry model. Participants completed an informed consent either in writing or orally at the beginning of their interview. The interviews ranged from 30 to 90 minutes depending on how much each participant wanted to share. Each interview was recorded and saved in a digital folder. We completed 31 interviews with 17 males and 14 females. Gordon, being a military school, was attended primarily by males. The male students were either local residents, boarding students who were sent there for more discipline than was provided at home, or boarding students who were there because of military aspirations. The female students did not live on campus until 1969, so they were primarily local residents or boarded with local residents. One female interviewee stated that she never wanted for a date. Many of the local females married military men, which played a part in the ongoing legacy of Barnesville. We were able to interview 20 white alumni, 10 African-American alumni, and one Hispanic alum. Gordon went through a phase where they would send representatives to Puerto Rico to recruit students for military training, but also to play sports. The white students and African-American students had very different memories of their time at Gordon. Interestingly, the Hispanic students were mostly accepted by other Gordon students, but they still had some difficulties in their interactions with local residents. Some of the themes that emerged were that they had strict teachers, but they thought it was a great education. A few students of color reported that the highest grade they were allowed to receive was a C. They talked about not being able to make up work that was missed when they stayed home to watch the funeral of Martin Luther King Jr. Most alumni mentioned a teacher who was important to them. You can see Ms. Marion Bush in the bottom right. She was at Gordon for almost 50 years and wrote a short book about Gordon's history up to 1972. In her book, Ms. Marion Bush recorded that integration took place in the fall of 1965. Gaynell Few and Vanessa Sutton, two African-American females, enrolled in the eighth grade. The following year, several more African-American students enrolled, with Brenda O'Neill becoming the first African-American high school graduate in 1967. Integration was described by Ms. Bush as taking place, quote, so quietly, so unobtrusively, that it passed unnoticed, end quote. She further stated that, quote, no incidents occurred, end quote. According to some of the African-American alumni, that is not entirely true. In the bottom middle, you can see one of the cadets in uniform. On the bottom left, we have a picture of the military ball, which was a highlight of campus life. There was a lot of formality, but the alumni seemed to enjoy it. You also had typical college pranks. On the top right, you can see something like a pool circus. These students had a lot of fun. There was a military tank on campus that the guys would paint occasionally. They would paint stripes or polka dots. Then when it was discovered, they would have to repaint it. So this tank apparently has many, many layers of paint. Of course, the guys would be disciplined for these pranks. They would have to do what they call bull ring, which is where they would walk for 50 minutes in a circle carrying a gun. That was their punishment. One 50 minute bull ring for each demerit. I believe some of them had a little bit of competition going to see who could get the most demerits and walk the most bull rings. One of our alumni talked about putting toilet paper in the cannon so that when his peer would fire the cannon, it would shoot toilet paper all over the campus, which they would have to clean up. So as much as they were very disciplined students during that time and the culture was very strict, they were still having fun. On the top left, you can see a more relaxed atmosphere. This was around 1971 to 72 when the military hold was reduced at Gordon. The students were pushing back on the restrictions and wanted more freedom. That started shortly before Gordon became part of the public university system. Here we have pictures of some of the sports teams from the late 1960s. As I mentioned, we talked to some of the African-American alumni. You can see a couple of the females in the basketball picture. In contrast to Ms. Marion Bush's recording, the integration passed unnoticed, there were some challenges reported by these first students of color who integrated Gordon. There were stories of what they called slave day, where a person was auctioned off to become someone's slave for the day. It was a fundraiser, and at one point, the African-American students got together and bid on a young man, and they won him. 
It was ironic because he was one of the people who gave them a hard time. He called them names and made them feel unwelcome at Gordon. So they bid and won him. They were called into the administrator's office and given their money back. After that, the Slave Day fundraiser did not happen anymore. So you can see students being active in their own education, pushing back on the administration and even fighting for their rights in their own way. Gordon was different being a military school and being the high school for the local city. A lot of these students knew each other from the community. So when you consider Gordon's story of integration in comparison to some other colleges, there were differences. The developing theme is that it seems to be that the military atmosphere and the sports teams truly helped buffer some of the more negative potential consequences of the integration period. The big theme we're gonna to continue to explore in the spring is this concept of community resilience. I mentioned that my field is psychology and human services. A big part of what we study in human services is how to help people live their best life, how to reduce barriers and obstacles for people and communities. Resilience is an integral part of human flourishing. You can see here that resilience is a process, a process of linking adaptive capacities, moving forward toward a positive trajectory, positive adaptation. Resilience is bouncing back. According to Rhonda Toon, who is a longtime local resident, was a Gordon student and finished out her professional career as the vice president of institutional advancement at Gordon, Rhonda told me that Gordon's story was not as unique as she thought, but it was unusual in that it morphed and survived. That's impressive considering the long history and the many transitions that Gordon has navigated. Our questions moving forward have shifted from a focus on the town gown relationship during times of transition to a deeper focus on community resilience. We want to know what adaptive capacities helped Gordon survive and thrive through those numerous previous challenges and transitions and how we can leverage that adaptive capacity today. Many of our current challenges mirror those from the past. We want to avoid repeating the mistakes from the past, but can learn from the successes and build on those. We want to know how Gordon can continue to survive and thrive during current transitions. We are reviewing the 31 interviews that were completed last semester. We're looking for shared experiences to explore from multiple perspectives. I mentioned the Slave Day fundraiser. There was also the political campaign of segregationist Lester Maddox. After hearing these stories from our students of color, it will be interesting to hear about those same experiences from the perspective of the white alumni. There were national college protests against the Vietnam War. Gordon being a military school had a different take on that. Gordon students weren't protesting against the war. They were protesting for the war. So I wonder what that series of cultural events looked like from multiple perspectives. Once we narrow that down, we're going to update the interview guide and add in some of those key moments that we can explore together. Then we're going to go back and do more interviews. We're gonna continue our ongoing work with the theater department to create monologues and find the right playwright to put this on stage, to bring Gordon's story forward because it is a story of resilience. It's a story of adaptation in the face of numerous challenges, even for the Gordon students who didn't have the most pleasant time at Gordon. For those who brought integration to Gordon, they still say that the things they experienced made them stronger. We want to honor that. We want to honor their stories and we want to learn from them. We're going to continue to mentor students who are documenting this time in Gordon's history. At the end of each semester, we will share updates about our progress. Through this community engaged service learning projects, students have learned about the complex history of their college and the local community. They learned that different versions of historical events exist in the minds of different people, not because either vision is false, but because both are incomplete. Ryla Trailer, one of the student interviewers, stated that she learned the value of collaboration and delegation, especially when completing a big project. Lastly, and maybe most importantly, students learned the value of listening to older adults and understanding their stories. Current students saw the joy it brought the alumni to relive those years, even when some of the stories were difficult. The alumni found meaning and purpose in giving back to the younger generation by sharing what they've learned. Two students, Shakur Britton and Talisa Kelly Peavy, have remained in contact with their interviewees and developed a deeper mentoring relationship as a result of this project. If you would like to talk more about this wonderful project, please contact me at jtrailer1 at gordonstate.edu. Thank you for your time and attention. Have a great day.